So boom, 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 I have seen it. I have watched it. Um, the El Deal documentary, the Saudi Amani documentary. Thanks. Shout out to your boys at Hakuten TV. Really good doc. Really good doc. Um, and um, I want to just you know break the doc down into segments, and I think I make, maybe you could break it down maybe into sort of three segments per se, possibly. Um, but um, yeah, man, it's was very interesting to say the least. Very interesting to say the least. Neon. Neon. Neon, neon, neon. So let's start first with um, Bambali. I believe that is the village where Saudi Amani came through Bambali. And um, societal norms. Societal norms. Why did I say societal norms? You know, um, human beings or certain cultures are slaves to tradition. And tradition is cool. Tradition is very cool. You know, being cultural is cool. But we are individuals, and not everybody is the same. And if you treat everyone the same, and if you live life homogeneously or like a monolith, I think um, society can't move forward. The only way society can move forward is having a balance of people that work within a monolith and within a group and the individuals. But it's the individuals that create things, it's the individuals that entertain us, it's the individuals that give us the Maradonas, the R9s, and so forth. Um, so you looked at like Isadi Amani and for him he was like, you know, um, based on his culture and where he came from, football was out of the question. And even as, as he said to his uncle, he said to his uncle, you know what, I'm, one day I'm going to, you're, you're never going to farm again. And his uncle said, nah, impossible, bro, like, stop dreaming. Like, nobody from Bambali should even even dream. So what is about doing is to even dream of becoming a professional football player. But man, you know, he, was, he knew he was talented and I think there's always those things of, of risk. And always in, in life, you always have to take that risk and go outside of your comfort zone. And for him, it was like, I'm going to go to um, Dakar, which is obviously the capital of Senegal. And it's obviously spurred on by what those dudes did in also Elagi Diouf and then those goals. I think it's Tony Silva. And that guy was a pretty good key keeper. So he went there because that's obviously where they were looking at trials and so forth. But then once his family and I heard about that he had, he had gone without telling any of them, Manny then put on the gauntlet that I'm only going to do one year of school and that's it. I'm, not, I'm going to chase my, my dream. And luckily and happily, as Manny said, they respected him. So, I, but I just, but you know, you, you say again, you know, if things were different. So because of tradition, you would not allow your child to chase his, his dream. Because those are always, and I think I said this on one of my other streams, I respect people who try and fail. There is nothing to be ashamed of about failure. I have a zero respect for people who don't even try. For if you don't even go out there and try and fail, I have no respect for you. So people who try and fail, there's nothing to be ashamed of. You went out there and you tried. You put your neck out, out there. And it didn't happen. But how do you never know if you never try? So... So that's this. So then, the other big one was margin of error. The, the small margin of error. So he's at Mets and so forth, and he has to try and prove himself. And obviously, you know, the, the, his, his brought over and, and everything. And I think in his first, and this is so before he was brought on by Mets, the, um, the um, white coach had viewed him in Senegal, and I think he scored like four goals in a game, dribbled the pitch, I was like, oh my God, this guy is, is, is sensational. But he said the player that he saw in Senegal isn't the same player that he saw in the first training session in Metz and so forth, and he, he, he berated Mane afterwards. And Mane, as he said, he was crying and he was in tears. And he said to himself, and this was, Mane was like, if I mess this up, that's it. They'll send me back to Senegal. It's over. So it just shows you how we see the finished product. We see the man who's scoring all these crazy goals for Liverpool, doing stuff at Senegal, waiting for Salam Santa and everything. But we forget about the, the about how easily we couldn't have seen this. Because again, if he didn't show up and really show that he was one of the best guys on the pitch, he'd be caught and he'd, he'd go back to San Senegal, a totally different life. So the kind of pressure and, that, and that's the key thing here. I don't think Mane 
had more. I don't think there's there's no Liverpool game or no Senegal game that had more pressure than him proving himself to remain in France and not go back to the life of a farmer in Senegal. So when when I just did that, I was like, damn, man, you know, because it's different from like a test, you know, like like a test that you take or like an exam you take. Where see for a test and an exam. It says an exam, just if you do the right revision, and it doesn't imply itself, but you combine the revision and so forth, you should really, you should succeed. Most times or not, you should really su- su- succeed. But in football, you can think and dream about it all at once. It doesn't mean anything. It's like, I remember sometime when like, I was one of the fastest um, guys in my school at, the, at, at 100 m- m- meters, you know. And before, like, the 100 meters race, I used to think about, okay, how should I start? How should I go? You know, how should I go, go through and everything? But once I actually got to the 100 meter start line, all that stuff I was thinking about meant nothing. It meant absolutely nothing. So there is no revision you can do. There is no, there is no revision. And say, okay, so so remember, remember, this is what you revised. No, no, no. You just have to go out there and just apply yourself and, and just... Do it and try and do it when that guy blows his whistle and just make those decisions in real time when it happens. You know, so thinking about what you're going to do before before, the, before you go on the pitch is not the same as when you're actually on the on the pitch. So it's it's a crazy thing. So obviously, it's not happened. Did well. Went to Mets, Southampton. You know, moved over to Liverpool and and so forth. Um, and then you just saw how it was just like a rise, rise and rise and rise and rise and. Rise and, and how you you saw how he was so loved amongst you know the Liverpool fans and how he ingratiated himself. Really n- nice place as as well. And now another key point was his agent, who I think might be Swedish but speaks French. I think Bjorn or Bjorg, and he said like, look, he is it's one of the best decisions of his life as his agent, and having a and that and that's the whole point is like. Because the agent is key. This, this is the guy that can secure you the bag and can really ensure that you have, you're in the best possible position when signing contracts and so forth. So it was really, really good to see that. So, oh, wow, look, look at the kind of, like a friend that has been, been, been before. And I think it just shows you how important it is to have like that really good agent. That you can lean upon, but also not just an agent, but someone who's like a friend. Because if someone is just an agent and a worker for you, does he really have your best interests? Or is he just thinking about himself? But if somebody is literally like your friend, he's literally part of your family, he's literally one one of you, you're like, bro, we're in this together. Hence why so many football players have their brothers as agents. Well, now Dino, his big brother, is his agent. Because, you know, there are, there are times when your brother can screw you over or your sister can, can, can screw you over. But... More likely than not, as I say, blood is thicker than water. So your brother and sister will always have your back. Diego Sim to Munich, his agent is his sister. So we have that then with the agents. But I think the really big one for me, obviously again, Barcelona, no, sorry, oops, sorry. <laughs> Barcelona couldn't score one G. Just for looking at that whole thing again, Barcelona really couldn't score one G. My lord. So Put that to one side. Um, you then had um, see the the biggest one for me, and this was the one that was biggest one for me because for me, I for me like national teams and stuff like that just means more to me than anything else, and, and that's just how I how I've always been. Um, I'm a World Cup merchant. I'm proud of it. So the Senegal bits really was the one that really got me. That's the one that, that, that really got me. And there just there were several different things. But what really struck me was, and I think this is Homer has parallels with Messi. What really struck me was the arguments you saw some Senegalese have, just like I think like in the marketplace just outside, and how some people say, Look, look all the stuff that he's done for Liverpool. He's not he has done anything for the Senegal. He has to bring back a trophy for Senegal and all the guys with the say, oh, look, he is the captain, he's the leader, he still plays with his, with his hearts for Senegal and so forth. And people were like, no, 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 you've, it's all good what you've done for Liverpool and everything, but you have to bring back a trophy for Senegal. Similar to the whole thing with Argentines. Argentina was like, it's great message what you've done for Barcelona and everything. Maradona brought us a trophy. 
until you bring us a trophy, Maradona means more to us than you. So we now look over now at um, the 2019 African Cup of Nations. And but even before that, so this was, I don't know, was this the 20, was it 2018? I think it was 2018, either 2018 or 2017, but I, I think it was the 2018 Cup of Nations, I believe, I think, where, maybe, maybe 2017, where's Manny missed a penalty in the semi final against Cameroon. Um, and just saw how much that affected it. And the pressure you have on you in the country is incredible, especially if you're a Saudi man. If you're that brick neon, who cares? But if you're a Saudi man, you are the star of the, the team. You are arguably, people will say El Haji Diop, but really, you are the best player that Senegal has ever pr 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 produced. So there's even much of a greater spotlight on you and greater scrutiny whenever you play for the national side. So you look at the Cup of Nations and so forth, and again, you know, you saw how they got to the final and they didn't win. And I remember saying to myself, like, damn it, you know, it's like, it, it means something. Like, your people don't get it twisted. You see, like, Liverpool fans or Barcelona fans were like, oh my gosh, people in Argentina should be happy and should be praising Messi with what he's done. People in Senegal should, should be happy. I mean, praise the man with, with what, what, what is done. For people who, they've never left the country, they've never even left their neighborhood. That's, the pride of their country means a lot. They don't give a damn about anything outside of their district or outside of their country. So you being the beacon and the emblem of the country now winning a trophy for the nation, oh my gosh, that, that means everything. And that means so much more, more than anything else. So, when you saw Mane, um, so when you saw he, he didn't win everything, and even for me, I was like, damn this man, if only he won that thing, if only he won that nation's cup, if only Kulipari would be on the defense, oh my god. And even for me, I, was, I just remember how pissed off I was because I, I wanted Senegal to win, I really wanted Senegal to win just for the Senegalese people, you know, uh, and those, I know someone from, from Senegal as well. But then something struck me. When he then went back to his neighborhood and, and so forth, to his uncle's house, well, him and his uncle's house that they, they built and so forth, and I was just addressing the people. And I said to myself that, oh, I'm looking at this the whole wrong, wrong way. That it's bigger than football. It's bigger than a Champions League. It's bigger than a Nations Cup. It's bigger than a, it's bigger than a World Cup. Like, Mane going back to Senegal, building a school, building hospitals, improving the area, improving his village and so forth, and using his um, popularity, his fame, his means, his funds to enhance and improve the lives of Senegalese, that's more than any. A World Cup or, or a Nations Cup, that's intangible. You can't touch that. It's just, it's a thing, it's, 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 a, it's a construct. What is tangible is, oh my gosh, my kids have a better school to go to. My kids have a better area to operate with. We have hospitals which can improve ourselves. We have improved med medicine. We have expertise from abroad that can actually help Im improve our way of, li of living. Right? And so what money does for the Senegalese people is it's huge and it's more meaningful than whatever in it. What, how will a nation's cup improve life? It will, it will improve you mentally, be like, yeah, we want it, blah, blah, blah. But you now have to go to a hospital that is in great, a school that ain't great, and living in a, in, a, in a neighborhood with broken down roads and so forth. You know? So, initial scope is cool for the short term, but for the long term, it's about improving the infrastructure. So, when I just thought, I was like, no, 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 I'm like, man is already winning. Now, of course, he wants to win the Palamdo, and I think the Palamdo would be huge, and he does want to get that Palamdo, but he's already winning. So, what got me is that I was so wrapped around, damn it, you failed, man. You have to win a Nations Cup for Senegal. That is meaningful. You have to do, do that. But then I said, no, no, no. What he's doing for Liverpool, his, the focus on him, him winning African Football World of the Year, him being the face of African football right now, and him being considered one of the biggest players in the world right now, that's 
enhances Senegal because when people say, oh, this guy from Senegal, oh, what's Senegal? Let me research upon Senegal. And even when he, that gives you sponsorship deals, sponsorship deals gives you more money. And the more money means you cannot help people and use the funds to actually help improve other people. The people want to work with you. People want to be associated with, 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 with you. And they can use those associations to help enhance the lives of people within your village and your, and your country. So it's bigger than football. And it isn't just about the specific trophies. And, you know, it's very easy to point the blame on these football players. We're like, oh, look at how much these guys earn. Look at these guys. And I've, I've, I've been a victim of that. I'm like, look how much they, they earn. But then as my brother said, it's like, it's supply and demand. If you're going to pay crazy man's for resistance tickets, the money is there for them to be paid this amount of money based on how global and popular the sport of football is. But be, beyond that, there are players like Emmanuel or an Osla and so forth who they do a lot to help the community. They do a lot to help their people. Like Sadie Mane is not a man. Doesn't, especially from this documentary, he's not a materialistic dude. You know, he's not a dude about bling, bling, big things and everything. I just see he's very, very down to earth. And even when those... Um, since when he went back to Bambali and they were eating together as a group, that food looked pretty nice, by the way. And they were eating together as a group and so forth. Like, no, oh, no, no, no. Like, you can take the man out of the village. You cannot take the village out of the man. At this very core, he's still that man from the Bambali village who has extremely important core values. And those core values are very important to carry with you all the way through, man. So, yeah, man. Um, made in Senegal. Pretty damn good. Peace out. Become a Football Hot member and gain access to cool emojis on the live streams and get access to new YouTube content by clicking the join button here. And to view that new content crack, head over to the YouTube channel homepage and click on the community tab over here.